this is you for the duration of this video. Today I'm going to teach you about a concept in math called polar coordinates, and as a corollary to that, polar plots. And in doing so, I hope to improve your intuitions about functions in general by using a shooting arrow metaphor, but we'll get to that later. So imagine you're about to enter a city, and you notice that the roads are set up with these nice, straight, vertical lines, and it has other roads going across those vertical lines, horizontally. And you're told that the vertical lines are known as streets, and the horizontal lines are known as avenues. And they have this nice numeric labeling convention where the streets and avenues start at one somewhere and increase as more streets and avenues are added to the city. This is actually a very easy and helpful system to organize and communicate locations in space. If you were, say, trying to head over here, at that particular intersection, you would say, oh, I'm going to 5th Street and 4th Avenue. For this location, you'd say I'm going to 2nd Street and 2nd Avenue. And notice that it's sort of arbitrary that I'm saying the street first, followed by the avenue. But that would be a convention that would likely be adopted. And for this location, since it's not exactly at an intersection, you might say I'm headed to 5th Avenue between 3rd and 4th Street, and so on and so forth. And you could even make more granular adjustments to that as you please. Now I'm going to show you that this is not the only robust system to organize and communicate locations in space. Instead, you might do something like this. Create these circular roads, and in principle, if you were on one of these circles, you could never get off. You just keep going around and around. So we can create these intersecting roads that go like this. And notice that having roads that come out in this fashion would essentially allow you to go to any point you want to, just like the rectangular plane. So we also need a numeric labeling convention. We can label the circles 1, 2, and increasing as they get bigger. And we might call the straight lines rays, and just label them 1, 2, and around, around the circle. But nonetheless, if I were to pick a point on this new city, I could very easily communicate its position by indicating the ray and circle that it lies on. For example, this point is at ray 4, circ 3. This point at ray 2, circ 4. This point at ray 6, circ 2. You get the idea. And another note, it probably makes more sense to label the rays by degrees rather than arbitrary number labels because that would communicate more about the ray's position than just an arbitrary number, don't you think? So notice that this coordinate system is just as robust about communicating and organizing locations in space as the rectangular system. So one of the interesting things about polar coordinates are these things called polar plots. But before we talk about that, let's do a quick review of the plots that you are already familiar with, commonly known as Cartesian plots or rectangular plots. One way to think about them is to imagine a little shooting mechanism that essentially starts out at some origin point and moves little by little. As it moves, it shoots these tiny little dots either out of its head or out of its butt. And in principle, it would do this shooting in a smooth fashion. And at the end of it all, you would connect all of the dots, and that is essentially what's given by a graph of y versus x, or y equals f of x, where f is essentially my little gun there. It's moving along the x-axis and outputting values of y based on where it shot the dot at on the x-axis. And just by arbitrary choice, really, most of us tend to look at a graph like this and actually interpret y as a function of x. We subconsciously imagine this little shooting arrow moving along the x-axis and shooting out values of y according to where the arrow was on the x-axis. But that way of interpretation is just an arbitrary learning strategy that is employed usually from high school. The fact that we think of x as the independent variable and y as the dependent variable. But we could have just as well have done it in a different way and had the little gun travel along the y-axis and think about x as a function of y, or x equals f of y. And so these two fundamental relationships, x as a function of y and y as a function of x, are really the basics of Cartesian plots. Most relationships that you study will be two variables that can be thought of and represented in the context of a Cartesian plot. Now, for a polar plot, we don't actually have x and y in the same way that we did earlier. Instead, we have to think about space in terms of those circles and rays. But we can still build our shooting mechanism here at the origin. 
And just as an arbitrary learning strategy, we tend to think of the circles being represented by the letter R, and the rays being represented by the letter theta. So you would say that R is a function of theta, or R equals F of theta. And what happens in this case is that we treat theta, which represents an angle, as the independent variable, the thing that we have control over. So we would end up taking this little shooting arrow and spin it slowly around, and as it spins around, it would be shooting out different values of R, where R represents the circle that the dot lands on. Or, more correctly put, R represents the radius of the circle that the dot lands on. So as this little gun rotates around, it would shoot out a different value of R, depending on what the function f is. And notice that how far you shoot the dot actually depends on the function f and the angle that the gun is pointed at at the time of shooting, theta. So, at the end of all of this, my goal for you is that you can actually look at the image of these dots and interpret their distance from the arrow, r, as a function of the angle the dot makes relative to a right-pointed arrow, theta. Again, the image of the dots, in their totality, represents the entire relationship between r and theta, just as the shape of an xy function represents the relationship between x and y. And with that, I wish you luck for the rest of your day, and I'll see you here again in the next video.